Sometimes they say even winning the election it makes it even harder to manage because as we saw with the APC where President Buhari won and then all the deals that were allegedly cut, none of them were kept and you know, got people even more But when if your party doesn't win, I mean, there's really nothing to, <laughs> to hold on to. But let's leave that now because I mean, it's, we still have a few more weeks to talk about that uh, until the primaries to hold with the PDP. Now let's talk about PACT now, which is presidential aspirants under, under the acronym of presidential aspirants coming together. Uh, we did have uh, a lot of the others that we like to call them. It doesn't mean that they are not viable candidates. They just are not in one of the big two parties. And they've been making a lot of noise and doing serious campaigning on like the, the candidates from the two big parties. We have a lot of candidates who are crisscrossing states and sending their message across. And they came together to say, okay, maybe we should form a unit and get one person out who would be our candidate. Some of the aspirants decided not to be a part of that. But those who stood in, we did have Fela Durotoye and Kingston Mogalu come in first and second. And... Um, a lot of people were surprised at the outcome, first of all, because everybody thought Kingsley Mogalu was going to take it from the reactions I saw online. But what was interesting was Kingsley Mogalu now coming out and saying he was not going to honor this after agreeing to it. And people are saying this might be political suicide. Do you agree, first of all? Now, I'm going to, I'm going to start from, uh, if I had a one-on-one -on -one with Kingsley, I'll ask him, what are you thinking? Um, while I don't think Kingsley stands a chance to win the election, I think he had, he had so far the most robust and the most engaging campaign so far. Um, he, he has a very firm grip of issues. He has a way of connecting to people. And of all the other candidates in, I think there are 18, in, in, in that pact, he was head and shoulder above all of them. So I, I really didn't see a reason why he went into that agreement um, without look, watching his back. Uh, because... It puts him in a very bad light. You entered an agreement, and then, the, because the outcome of the agreement didn't favor you, you're backing out. Now, this is probably the first test, and this is what you're doing. So what happens when, um, like, like the Christians will say, if you're not faithful in what is small, how sure you're going to be faithful in what is big? Uh, it, it puts everything he has preached over time, uh, people begin to second guess and look at him again and say, are you who you really say you are? <coughs> Um, I, I worry for him, uh, but I also do think that um, he, he's such a very fantastic Nigerian who has huge potentials, um, somebody I love to listen to, somebody I think has a whole lot to offer Nigerians, but I think it was one poor political move. In but don't you think he has a valid argument if he says um, a lot of the candidates were not even there to vote, and it basically, if, if Pact was 18 people, and let's say, I think there were six or seven of them eventually who, who went into this. Is it really a valid pact? And then secondly, is, isn't he, doesn't he have a right to, to do what he believes in? If you're passionate about something, why not go for it? Um, first question, when did he realize that other people have pulled out? Was it after the voting or before the voting? So I, I'm, I'm sure he realized that from 18, it was down to 11 or 7, before the voting started. So you could have pulled out also. You stayed on, went through the voting with the belief you would win. So if, if the result was flipped and then it was Kingsley who came first and fell out second, would you have that long essay from Kingsley? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. So um, th that, that argument does not hold water for me, in my opinion. Uh, and secondly, why I concede that he has the right, absolute right, to pursue his dreams, stay by his values, his visions, he should also realize that every decision he makes has got underlying consequences. So if you give me your word, Ebuka, that I will eat on this table no matter what food is served, and then the, a, food, a particular kind of food is served, and you say, no, I'm not eating again, you have the right to stand up and leave. But please, you also have the right to say, um, um, Ebuka, you're not trustworthy. You gave me your word that you would eat. So that, that, that's what's playing out here. He exercise his right to say, I'm not honoring that agreement. But allow others also exercise their right to say, you gave your word, and then you renege on your word. What does, what does this do for, for our democracy, though? Because I, mean, I think this, for the first time in a long time, we have a pool of candidates who are outside the major parties who have gotten people talking. Um, do you think there's something there going forward, maybe in 2023? I don't know. But do you think, how positive is this? First and foremost, um, I, I think I, I'm happy the way things are going. 
a whole lot of us are getting more and more political acti politically active, which, which, is, which is very interesting. That's the only way our politics can grow. Young people are getting more and more involved. And attention seems to be shifting gradually from the general election to the process that brings the candidates. And that because that is where the real change happens. Now, the, when each and every one, not each and every one of us, when a larger percentage of us get involved in that process, then we can effect the change. Now, because once it gets to general election, there are five, six, seven candidates. Your choices are, your choices are very, very limited. But at the very beginning, you begin to determine that, no, Emmanuel should not even, in the first instance, have a chance to stand at the general election because X, Y, Z reasons. And Ebuka should. And we're asking, why should Ebuka should? Well, because the way he wears his agbada is the best way to be won. So the conversation now should happen at the very beginning. And I'm happy. I, I love the fact that people like Fela De Rutoye, Showere are getting involved. They are talking. They are showing interest. It, it's beautiful because the, the time has come to, tra to mo have a transition from that age bracket of Muhammad Bawari to a younger bracket. But it, it's not going to be like a coup the way we go seize power. Yeah. There has to so be it's, a conversation. It's processes like this that, that, would, that, would, that would drive there. Thank you very much, Imadili. I mean, I think we're going to talk politics from now till probably May next year. So the season. Have, it's, a very, it's a very long season ahead of us. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. We'll take a quick break now. I'll be right back. Please stay with us. Just want